the way the political system in Western democracies is set up is that whenever taxes go up, they go up on poor people and the middle class and the upper middle class. But the super rich, they always find ways to avoid taxation through all kinds of foundations and uh, benefits and so forth and so on. So at the end, tax increases have a very negative impact on the economy because it hits the, the people that consume the most, in other words, the middle class and the lower classes. And so it's unfair. Spending cuts would be desirable, especially in the case of the US and of European countries where transfer payments are huge. You understand? A country that has expenditures, it could spend uh, money on infrastructure and uh, productivity improving capital spending. But to take money out of the pocket of someone through fiscal deficits and transfer it to someone else is of no use, macroeconomically speaking. And the deficits, that I need to point out, mm -hmm. is a tax, a fiscal deficit, and which then leads to inflation, inevitably is a tax on the system. And in my view, this gentleman, this gentleman, Mr. Blumenthal is absolutely right. The US will have to inflate also because of the unfunded liabilities. And therefore, my view is that although the inflation figures may look better for the next few months, in the long run, I think the inflation figures and interest rates will exceed the peak we had in 1980-81, when the 10 years treasury was yielding more than 15%. It peaked out at 15.84% on September 21st, 1981. I think we're going to exceed that. The catalyst has begun already for a long time. Fiscal deficits uh, under Clinton and the booming stock market of the late 1990s, uh, there was a, for a brief period of time, for three years, there were fiscal surpluses. Since then, it's all red ink. And as a result of that, the government debt goes up and more pr money printing is necessary to finance this mess. <laughs> the Fed, like other government agencies and like other politicians and government officials, they are all lying. They never tell the truth. They tell the public what the public needs to hear. And their interest is, of course, to maintain the financial market at the high level. Uh, they don't want deflation in financial assets. And if they could, they would also prevent deflation in real assets like properties. But this is difficult to control. But basically, they can't afford the stock market to drop 50%. So they will print money. If the ordinary man realized that the rate of inflation is a tax on them, because as you know, in the US for the last two, three years, real incomes of uh, the typical household, I'm not talking the real incomes of Bill Gates, <laughs> that Warren Buffett, in real terms, in other words, inflation adjusted has gone down. In other words, the Fed and uh, the government statistics report that GDP is going up, but my figures suggest Dress that the standard of living of the typical household in the US and in Europe is going down. Ukrainian war has basically nothing at all to do uh, with the rise in interest rates and the rise in inflation in Europe. But the rise in inflation and interest rates in Europe has everything to do with irresponsible monetary policies of the ECB, the European Central Bank which printed uh, as a percent uh, of the balance sheet even more money than the United States Fed. And uh, that has led to a problem because interest rates were kept not only artificially low like in the US, but they were kept negative. In other words, negative interest rates has never happened before in history. For that, we needed some academics and politicians to run the ECB. Give me one example in history in the 5,000 years of recorded history where interest rates were negative. Not one. But as soon as we have these academics at central banks mixed with politicians that want to uh, essentially paint a picture that is much nicer than the reality, 
because they can't afford to tell the truth to ordinary citizens. In my view, the capitalistic system is the only system that guarantees freedom, uh, but it also entails responsibility and it entails wealth, uh, inequality and failure. You can only function uh, in a capitalistic system and in free market if you allow market participants to go bust. If you bail out everyone, you will end up with some sort of a fascist system or kind of a crony capitalistic system, which is happening in the Western world, unfortunately. So uh, the question whether we have too many banks in the US, uh, I don't, I can't answer answer it. In Switzerland, we have two large banks and one has now failed. So we have just one bank. And of course, this bank is now like a government bank. It's a private sector bank, but in character, due to its size and its social responsibility, it's like a government bank. If you have a global currency like the US dollar was, uh, a reserve currency, a lot of it depends on confidence and on prestige. If you travel internationally, uh, the US may be better liked than the Chinese and the Russians, but the prestige of the US has diminished a lot. China and the US are fighting for influence in Vietnam and in Cambodia and in Laos and in Thailand. In Laos, the Chinese are criticized because they built the railroad. Well, what do you think is better, to build a railroad or to carpet bomb the country? So it's normal that the Laotians that are among the poorest and the least developed nations in the world, they accept the Chinese investments with open hearts. And they're still collecting the bombs that the U.S. dropped on the country. Carpet bomb! I'm always concerned when the system breaks down that uh, you may not have access to your money, that it's taken away by, you know, the system. I mean, if people, if the government of incompetent bureaucrats that I have to stress, that I agree with <laughs> Kennedy. If these people could lock up a population, then they can also take your money away uh, anytime. They can imprison you and so forth and so on. So these are concerns. Uh, I live for this reason also in a country which is not extremely well organized. So you can slip under the radar. I think people, before they go on social media and broadcast all their achievements, they should think twice about it. I have friends who are ultra rich in the billionaire mm -hmm. class. They completely disappear from the sea. Completely. Uh, they moved out of the US and uh, nobody knows who they are. They, nobody knows where they are. I know sometimes because we correspond, but it's a confidential thing. And uh, this is the way uh, to protect yourself. We are in a situation where an investor has to ask himself, okay, I agree to some extent with Mark. I may think that it's not going to be as bad as he says, but it could be worse and this and that. And uh, that asset prices will go down. So how do I hedge? Now, the only hedging mechanism that I think makes sense is diversification. I mean, if I look at uh, today's performances of markets uh, and assets, uh, the, the asset class that went up is oil and gas, energy. Uh, the best performing is the one that was hated the most by the Greens, coal. They have all the negative things about coal and it's been performing wonderfully. And there are lots of coal stocks that are four or five times in one year. Uh, different assets speak out at different times. And my sense is that we are in a period of a lengthy, unattractive environment for asset. Whether you own real estate, the government is going to F you because they're going to increase taxes on real estate or on transactions, or in the socialist uh, states in the US, they'll impose rent controls. Rent controls is for the business owner, for the owner of an uh, apartment building, uh, the worst, because his cost of maintenance go up he can't charge more to his tenant. And uh, the people that run the, the governments nowadays, the interventionists, that's the biggest problem. They all think they're smart. They all think they should intervene in the economy. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, the little guy is crude anyway, because it's more difficult to, for him to implement some strategies than for people who have a lot of money, who can afford lawyers and accountants and tax uh, structures. You understand? Someone who has a billion dollars, for sure, he can arrange for him to pay very little tax or no tax at all. Small right. guy who has a small business, how can he 
have access to the best lawyers, tax consultants, auditors, and so forth. No, he hasn't got the access. I want to have some assets in Thailand because I live here. Because I think maybe one day I can't remit money from the US to Thailand, or I can't remit money from Switzerland to Thailand, and so forth and so on. So I have some assets here. Not because I have great confidence in Thailand, but I have to say it's a military government and I feel much freer under my military government here than under the Swiss democratically elected government in Switzerland. And I don't say this easily. I mean, I've been thinking about it. But anyway, so I have some money here. First of all, the property is not mine. It's in my wife and daughter's name. And But the, the bank account is in my name and the portfolio is in my name. And I have some properties in Vietnam and some in stock investments in Vietnam. But the logistic is the custody is in Vietnam. It's not Vietnamese stocks held through an American bank. You understand? If you want the geographical uh, diversification, you can't hold all your assets in one bank and they have own shares in Brazil and some in Russia and some there. You have to have the custody in different geographical locations. Nobody has yet told me, hey, how do you, will you uh, recycle all these batteries that will come on stream and the blades of windmills that they want to drive uh, or supply the energy uh, from in Germany and so forth. And nobody has told me what will really happen when the dollar will begin to weaken considerably. Now you may say, Mark, don't be stupid. The dollar will never be weak. Okay, then I'm stupid to think about it. But in my view, the likelihood that the dollar will one day be kind of the currency that nobody wants is, in my opinion, quite likely. I'm not telling you that it's happening, it will happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I don't know from what point it will happen, but one day the dollar will become very weak. So and at that stage, it will become very interesting what happens to interest rates and what happens to the economy and so forth and so on. I don't want to sound overly bullish and I don't want to sound overly bearish. But if I look at the US market compared to the emerging markets and compared to European markets, uh, it has outperformed just about everything over the last 11 years. And uh, emerging markets have performed very badly relative to the US since 2015, some a bit later, some a bit earlier. I think that in emerging economies, that's my observation. I'm not bullish about Thailand, but realistically looking at the economy, the advantages it had and it has and the disadvantages. I think in Thailand, the valuations are okay. You know, you buy today, maybe they'll drop another 30%, but eventually they'll be higher. You buy today the same eye conductors in the US, I'm not sure they'll be much higher 10 years from now. Because I've seen Cisco. Cisco, NVIDIA was like Cisco in, in year 99, 2000. Never recovered. And so I think that in emerging economies, when I look at Latin America, and you said at the beginning, Mark, there are these and these and these factors that may have a negative impact. I said maybe all of them come into play. Mm -hmm. And I would say Latin America is probably geographically the place that could maybe stay out of World War Three, World War Four, you know, of a major conflict. So to have some assets in Argentina and Brazil may not be so stupid. I don't have major hedges. My hedge is that I have a relatively large cash position, which includes bonds that mature within a year or two. But I look at it this way. I think a lot of people will lose all their money. A lot of people will lose 50%. I hope I will only lose, say, 15 to 20%. The price of gold and silver and platinum have been weak, and uh, there's no interest among retailers to buy it. In other words, it's an investment that is neglected. It's not the best investment, but it is an avenue to lose less money, to have something in uh, your custody, but you have to decide where you want to keep it, under your mattress or in your garden or in a safe deposit box and so forth. This is a decision you have to take. But basically, I would use this weakness to accumulate some, which I buy every month gold for the last 40 years. Asset price collapse, like the 30s. Uh, I don't think many people made money. Uh, there was a big opportunity to make money in the 20s and 30s. And uh, I, all, I also say this today, in illegal activity, smuggling, black markets. Because if you think about it, the government intervenes more and more. Don't think in the world that government officials are like angels and all the businessmen are evil. <laughs> and all the businessmen cheat and uh, do funny things. 
that the government is honest. Not at all. If you look at the fight of the struggle between the mafia and the government uh, from the times of the prohibition until today, well, maybe uh, the government officially has won. Or I could argue, no, <laughs> the mafia has taken over the government. Yep. It's become very, very corrupt. Uh, don't believe uh, for a second that in Western democracies, the governments are nice people. No, they're all utterly corrupt. They all, uh, they, they all take money. 